where I can get some more car parts. You need some car parts? I can get you a lot of car parts. Been a little too nice to y'all. I got a up price on y'all. Snake eyes on dice for y'all. Shoulders on ice for y'all. Frozen. A6 all the hay. I won't get involved today. Got lost in the ball and age. I'm flipping the bars. I'm flipping the, flipping the, flipping the all record off record. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm on my way to visit someone I thought I would never see again, to be honest with you. Um, most of the viewers of this channel will recognize who he is. This is a very last minute thing, and it's a very delicate issue because this guy has been featured on another prison YouTube channel. I mean, at the end of the day, it is what it is. I think this is an interesting story. Um, I really want to catch this person's mindset because they do have pending charges. But anyway, we've arrived, um, and you're going to see in just a minute who I'm talking about. So uh, is this is this is this like where you keep all the uh, all the you do like a lot of uh, automobile restoration, right? Something like that. Yeah. I work with a lot of, a car, lot of parts. car parts. And this is the coolest thing ever. I know. You, I know you quit. What do you think this is used for? A beer bong? Close. Uh, I don't know. Do you, you put you put you put weed in here or something? No. <laughs> Smoking no. ice out of no. that? What? <laughs> he puts it here so you can hold your beer when you're playing cornhole. Dude, that is the laziest. <laughs> that is the laziest <laughs> junkie right. convict shit I've ever. Hey, hey, look, we're gonna take this uh, inch and quarter here. We'll, we'll, we'll get inch and a half here PVC, and then screw this, uh, you know, this little coupling on here, and we're gonna stamp it in there, and then you have what you but got it, there. Hey, I don't even need to bend down. I ain't gotta bend up. It's right here at fucking hip level. I mean, what? but that's the thing, man. You Jesus gotta, Christ! You gotta find find to do with your idle time when you're not getting, you know, not into stuff. You know. You gotta, well, you know, and there's I call nothing. It piddling, piddling. I piddle. Piddle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I used to take, uh, I mean, back when I, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm glad you're doing what you're doing, man. Yeah, I love your work. Really? Yeah, and it's not like, it's not just you do that. What you're doing is work. It, you, what you've come up with, it's first class. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad to, to say that, you know, I know you, we've met, we kicked it and stuff like that. Because we do no. know each other from Indian Creek. Yes. And actually, I, the first time I met you, I was looking for a, um, one of those Sony Walkman radios. I was about to say radio. radios. I was about to say. I mean, you were showing me your storage units yesterday. Yeah. yeah. And, you, you know, everything is, like, really well organized. It's not like a big pile of... of uh, you have to be because it's it's just like you said, it's a business. Because you got to find it, right? That's it. And that's the thing because all these, all these phone calls and the questions and stuff like that, man, it's never ending. Yeah. And it's a full-time job in itself. And the thing is, I thought when I made more money that things would be easier. I'm still eating the same meals I was eating, <laughs> you know, you know, I got work and stuff like that, but I just have more expenses. Yeah. You know, instead of having the cheap phone, I got the expense. I got the best phone. And because of that, my son wants a phone. I'm like, yeah, and yeah, my girl, ooh. Now I got a $400 phone bill. But you, <laughs> you are know? taking care of, I mean, you have, how many How many kids do you have? I got three kids, two by love and one by blood. Uh, my, my son turned 10. That's a cool phrase, man, two by love, one by blood. As somebody who was raised by my stepdad and essentially mm -hmm. abandoned by my own father, you know, he's been my stepdad for 33 years, and I call him dad because... That's it. You know, the blood just kind of made the genetics yeah. or whatever, like what I am, but, you know, I got a problem. You know, I'm yeah. calling... I'm <laughs> yeah, calling like, you know what I'm saying? I, I got family that ain't blood, and, you know, and blood that ain't family, you know, so... How old are they? Um, 20, 16, almost 17, and 10. My boy just turned 10. And so, when you do well for yourself yeah. you know as long as you're sober you make sure that that's a priority you know absolutely you. man and the funny thing is because of covid i gave my daughter a car and because of covid she hadn't been able to get her license you know and she's been shining it you know what i'm saying got a new radio she's been working at the sonic you know she's getting it in but you know it's a good feeling it's a good feeling when you take care of what's important to you you know some people are like how are you doing what you do? And I just said, I've done everything that I, I said I was going to do when I was locked up, you know? Well, which doubles back to the, you're yeah. kind of red from Shawshank. And yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> I'm looking for the rock yeah. hammer. Yeah, that's and, it. And, uh, you know, this that's is what it. do you do? And he goes, well, you know, I find things or whatever. I forget exactly. I'm, I'm a man who knows how to get things. Man who, and you are a man who knows how to get things. I remember yeah. specifically, you know, seeing you in the shades and you had the leave. I think you had a Levi shirt, you know, which is a deluxe a, item. Yeah. And the Timberlands, you know, and 
that's the thing, man. It, it's survival, whether it be inside or out, one way or another. And because of my record, I've had a record since I was a child. So when was the first time you got locked up or got arrested? How old were you? What'd you do? First charge I got was robbery. And uh, you were a kid. I was in fourth grade. Fourth grade. Yeah. Well, actually, t possession of a firearm. So, 11, 12 years old, ten. Yeah, I got the paperwork. How did that happen? How does a ten year old nah, get a gun? It was. And a, how does that? It's a BB gun, and I, I, I approached the paper boy. And you wanted to. You wanted to. I just You wanted his job. You wanted. You, you, <laughs> want, you were wanting to. Read we were a little talking. Bit. He even had a misunderstanding. But no, uh... <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, man, it's, 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 it's 30, 32 years ago. It's okay. No, 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 it it's okay, man. I was just... Did you really want to read? Were you interested in the, the editorials or... No, 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 you know how it is. But I had things growing up. I had everything I wanted. My parents were, you know, married. A military family? Yeah, my dad, World War II in Korea. He, uh, United States Navy. He was Filipino. And, uh... That was your grandfather. No, that was my father. Your, your father was in World War II? In Korea. So your father is much older than yes. you would expect. Yes, I was, the, I was, the, I was the, the little one. But yeah, I mean, just, just working and just giving it all you got. He always said that. You know, my dad was in the Navy nor ship go, and he just worked all his life, you know. And, and your nationality, your ethnicity is you are... Mestizo. Mestizo, and that is... Filipino and Caucasian. Filipino and Caucasian. And I think what a lot of people don't understand, or maybe maybe they do or they don't, but what I always found interesting about this area, sort of Salem, Kimsville, whatever, yeah, they got a lot of is Filipinos. there's tons of Filipinos here. <laughs> yeah. Or Filipino yeah. or Mestizo, yeah. Filipino and, and Caucasian. And yeah. I always wondered, like, why? Is it just, is it a... Is military, it, man. It's just you know, military. And, yeah, and Filipinos are generally a kind, gentle, giving, caring individuals. And somewhere I, w I got lost when I was young, you know, uh, greed. I mean, they gave me everything. And, uh, you know, it's just the way it was. I it mean, takes I, me back to, speaking of Filipinos, man, you've been to Chesapeake City Jail, Andon. No, no, you no. You don't know Andon? No, no, I'm Virginia Beach all the way. Oh, 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 oh. I'm Virginia Beach. So he's actually a guy that worked for, this is a completely like different tangent, but you know, Ferdinand Marcos, he was like a captain in their paramilitary oh, really? organization. <laughs> yeah, and so, you know, the running joke is that he's the honey badger in Chesapeake City Jail. You know, he's a little guy, he's a Filipino, he's like 60 years old, and nobody fucks with him. I mean, he's funny, he's got the heavy accent and everything, but like, none of the COs will ever talk shit about this guy. And he is the first guy, like if there's a, if something jumps off and they need five, six, seven, they, you know, they need the whole squad in there to, uh, to yeah. intervene, man. He is like the alpha dude, he's in there, man, because yeah, he loves the action. Virginia Beach got Iceman. And what's, what's, what's the story of Iceman's Iceman? Iceman's thing is, what I think he, he worked with Bruce Lee, he has pictures. Wow. You know how things in jail stories and stuff Yeah, who like knows, that. right? Well, <laughs> but, I mean, but a lot of people, the really, the, I want to say the tallest man alive or the tallest man in America actually used to, I think he's retired now, but he worked for Norfolk City Jail. And yes, he was in the circuit, right. yeah, yeah, like yeah. seven, yeah, yeah, ten yeah, yeah, yeah. or something. You're right, man. He was in Guinness Book World Records. Yeah. I remember seeing that, like, wow, he's even got If you didn't know and you had just heard that story, you'd be like, ah, oh, come on, man, you well have been in jail. Just ask out lie. But in reality, man, that's, that's, you know, that's for real. So some of this stuff, it's hard to separate it, though, fact from fiction. And that's was a big motivator for me coming to see you because yeah. what I know of you of the last couple of years was just some of the stuff that I saw on, you know, on the internet. Yeah. And I thought that I was a little bit of a kinship with you because I know what it's like to be on the receiving end of, oh, here's a 20 minute video, this is my take, and now you have thousands of people judging you and you can't really defend yourself. Well, inevitably, man, people have an opinion anyway of what they feel or, or bias or prejudice to opinion. Sometimes of people, some, oh, excuse me, so I, sometimes people have opinions without really knowing who the person is. Like, I hadn't seen you in a while. I've seen your videos. I, I really don't know you, but, you know, like my, you know, somebody would ask me, what do you think about, Jan? you know, Jan? I was like, he's cool. He's kind of, they're like, he's kind of crazy, he's psycho. I'm like, true. Nah. Not, not bullshit. No, nah, I mean, but nah, man, that's not the guy I know. When you do time with somebody, we didn't walk the yard or nothing, but you can see in someone's demeanor, generally how they carry themselves, you know? And some people are straight up, you know? And the circles you keep you around. Like me, I was by myself carrying on the volleyball court or just hustling everything, you know? And out here, I've had to find ways to just, 
make ends meet. And I won't, I, man, yesterday was trash day. The van was full of chairs, you know, stuff like that, man. It, the hustle never it really ends. It's just like, like all these storage units, man. I never, I, I wanted all this stuff, but it's just another bill. You know, I, I make all right money, but it just, it comes and goes just like everybody else. And, uh, and then we, we find ourselves struggling and we, we do things that, uh, I did things that I'm not proud of and that I let a, a lot of people down. And I understand. And sometimes some people will reach toward, you know, something like my incident and then some people will go away. And then you find out who your friends are, who your family is, and people who are generally real, who generally care. Um, there was a lot because, you know, I was released from prison and I was adamant about helping people and, and staying, stay walk the line and live the life as straight and narrow, but it's not always what it looks like on the internet, you know. Um, I seek other avenues. I was a hustler. I'm not a hustler by blood, that's for sure. But uh, something when I was younger, like I said, from the incident there to being paper boys to cut lawns to just, it's just always been kind of hard. And I've always reached for the easy way out, you know. And making fast money is is the easy way out. It's an addiction in and of itself. There's and, a whole lifestyle to it. And, and, and people who, 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 like, really know that and, you know, the hustle and the copping and the meeting and the, just the whole gist of the game. I feel like I'm living my own personal action movie. Yeah, you know when you're I mean, constantly ducking and dodging. And dude, what's I mean, that dude going on? What's, yeah. what's going on with him over there? Yo, I think that's a cop. This, I mean, all that stuff is just like. And it's, then you throw drugs into the mix, and it becomes heightened, like. And I mean, and it's real life though, and it's like a movie, you know. But in the same time, you feel, you know, you know, I I, I get I let my ego get the best of me. I had in, individuals that would contact me every day, tell me how they were proud of me and stuff like that, and I got a big head. All my life, I've kind of wondered, I, or I've had these two lifestyles that I was adamant about, that I, that I was 100% here, 100% here. And I used to often ask myself, am I a bad guy who's doing good, or am I a good guy who often does bad? two years I've never had my child alone my son by blood little bro I've never been able to pick to take him go take him ever my family I never showed up at my family's house with my son ever and I bust my ass but 
It's one of those things that you have to understand it takes time. Yeah. 